All right, everybody. No intro. Let's get straight to the point here. I know it's on everyone's mind. It's Ethereum W and Ethereum, uh, what is it, FAIR? FAIR. Yeah, the fork wars, boys and girls. So we're just here. I mean, if anybody wants to come in, ask them some questions, uh, be respectful. Obviously, I'm not going to, I'm probably just going to mute you if you're an asshole. But uh, yeah, this is a pretty exciting thing that's going on, basically because it's the only thing going on right now. It's the middle of a bear market. Everyone's wrecked. Everyone's bored. I'm I'm bored. I'm restless. So I got sucked into it too. <laughs> you know what I mean? I I got sucked into this all all this uh, fork business, and now my only thought is, you know, how do I extract money out of this in the best way possible? Um, let's set the stage a little bit. If someone's brand new here, or if someone's just getting here and have no idea what's going on, Ethereum forked into the proof of stake version, which is kind of like the mainstream version going forward. There's also two additional forks that people decided to make called ETH, ETH Proof of Work and Ether Fair. These uh, tickers are ETH W and ETH F. Now, I don't really know who is behind these. I have not talked to any of the developers. I watched somebody from the Hex community interview the ETH Fair developer who <laughs> didn't instill much confidence with me on that one. Uh, kind of just was a little bit odd to me. Um, to me, my initial first impressions are, okay, this seems like a money grab from the miners because they want to keep mining something. Uh, think about from a miner's point of view, the reason that they want to keep using proof of work is because they have all this mining equipment that they don't want to just sell and get rid of. They'd like to keep using it to make money by mining some blockchain. And what are they going to switch to? They could switch to you know Ethereum Classic or any of these other proof of work chains, but they decided to make their own. So to me, ETHW is basically a minor chain right now. Uh, it's got not too much development going on. Uh, people, yes, people have forked Uniswap. So there's a Uniswap over there. Actually, they didn't fork Uniswap. They just made it a new front end and changed the network uh, over there. And then people have, I think people have been making bridges. Uh, historically in cryptocurrency, bridges are what I see get hacked for the most money. So when bridges get really popular, a lot of bridge hacks happen in crypto. I mean, $600 million hacks, if you guys remember. People forget very quickly how often bridges get hacked and how often everything gets hacked in crypto. But there's centralized exchanges. I'm aware of all that stuff. Uh, I'm aware that there are ways that you could take all your forked coins. Uh, you know what? Let's backtrack. What this basically means for you as a hacked holder or holder of anything on Ethereum is that you have a copy of all your coins on two new blockchains, ETHW and ETH fair ETH W and ETH F. And what's going to happen is anybody's guess. So the central point of speculation is basically, do these blockchains have a long-term future or not? Do they have long-term attention? Do they have the potential to? Yeah, sure. They definitely have, there, there's a slight probability, small one, that maybe these survive and continue to thrive for many years to come. But because I don't think the intention of Ethereum W or Ethereum Fair was really to benefit any other coin holders other than the miners. I, I don't see a lot of support uh, going mainstream for either of these chains unless, you know, the hexagons are out here and they're trying to make stuff happen. They're trying to make, uh, <laughs> I mean, we, we've made stuff popular before in the past. So that's another counter argument. What I really want to talk about is I want to try to see both sides of the equation here. And by no means am I telling anybody to go buy Hex on ETHF or ETHW because I myself am not buying uh, on ETHW or ETHF because I don't have confidence, again, in these chains long term. Some people might, and you're entitled to do whatever you want. But uh, again, I'm not telling you to do anything because I don't have the confidence to do that. And so beware, you know, if people are telling you to go a certain route, ask them why. And obviously, at the end of the day, make your own decisions. People say stuff on the internet all day long. We're just a bunch of guys on YouTube and Twitter, and we're all figuring this out kind of along the way, just like you. I mean, I'm figuring things out just like you. And so be wary of people that claim to have all the answers, but do take everyone's opinion into account and then formulate your own opinion on what you want to do. Because uh, I get it, guys. It's boring in the bear market, and there's potentially a bunch of free money on the table, especially if you were a hex holder before the fork. But... If you're a new person coming in and funneling your new hard-earned U.S. dollars into a new fork that may or may not be around in a year, uh, at the same time, you don't want to be someone else's exit liquidity, right? Because that also means that there's a lot of big hex holders 
that have the ability to just dump hex their copy of hex on the proof of work chain or the eth fair chain they could dump at any moment not to mention the liquidity is incredibly thin it's like sixty thousand dollars total so uh basically in my opinion there's a couple of things that would have to happen to instill more confidence on the eth proof of work chain which is what me and johnny were just talking about on the green screen a couple of things right there would have to be a bridge that stands the test of time that actually is trustless i get it you can use a centralized exchange and as long as you're only on there for a couple of minutes you know you might you might be able to pull your coins off okay but centralized exchanges get hacked all the time <laughs> literally like every month there's some new exchange hack i can pull up a list of you for you of exchanges that have been hacked throughout history that it just happens over and over and people forget so quickly so i don't like promoting centralized exchanges but guys if you want to figure all this stuff out i'm not going to be sharing the links for any of this stuff because again i don't want to be the guy that shares the link and then somebody in the chat says oh coffee made me do it first of all there was there was a there, lot of that there's a terrible share their, uh, kyber kyber links Woo! i made money on kyber yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and look I've used it too. And like, but I don't want to say the names of this stuff. Yeah. Kyber is probably safe. Um, there's a couple bridges that are very experimental, very new. And then there's a couple centralized exchanges. So yeah, if you wanted to buy or sell hex W on the proof of work chain and then get it off via, via a centralized exchange and into the Ethereum blockchain or vice versa, you have the freedom to do that. You're a full grown adult, hopefully <laughs> if you're watching, uh, and you have the ability to do whatever you want. The thing is, if you want to find it, you'll find it. Like, I know you guys aren't stupid. Like if you want to go in the telegram channels and just do a search for Dex or do a search for exchange, you can figure out the exchanges that everyone's using and the Dex is everyone's using. Um, I, I would be very, very cautious about any bridge. I would stick to maybe exchanges and Dexes for now. I mean, even one of our apps app.icosa.pro now supports, uh, all the other chains as well. So, they give you the did ability they, to did they hook that up to fair now too yeah they yeah. took it up to fair and and proof of work i haven't so, even been over i haven't even been over to the fair yet to yeah try that out. i was over on the fair network the other night just playing around and i have even less confidence in the fair network than i have in the w network but you know guys i i'm a person that can change their mind right so it's not like i dictate what's going to happen here it's a crazy world out there and Going back to what I would want to see happen to give me more confidence in these chains is uh, number one, liquidity bonding. Me and Johnny were just saying, you know, if the origin address comes out and decides to bond liquidity between hex W and e, you know hex on Ethereum, that'd be extremely bullish, right? But the origin address would also have to have confidence in the fact that the network isn't just going to fail or fork off. You know, the EW network has like 10% of the hash rate that Ethereum had before the fork. At least that's what an article that I just read told me. I don't know if the article's correct or not, but it's probably got less hash rate than the original ETH, uh, ETH chain did before the fork. So there's always this risk, right? That the miners could always collude. They could always fork again. Uh, they could, you know, vote to go a certain way. They, they could vote to literally make a new chain that maybe deletes all the, all the hacks coins or whatever. Um, probably not unlikely, right? Probably but, not because we are the majority of the uh, activity that's happening on ETW right now. And if they pulled hex out of it, nobody would even be there. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, that's a little bit of a, um, silver lining in all this too, is some residual side effect of all this is that because hex and hedron are some of the top trading pairs on these forks chains, uh, it's going to bring some new eyeballs into hex in general, but it also you know, I also don't want a lot of you guys to be guinea pigs and be buying the top of something that might get hacked in a month or two months or whatever. It's only five days old, right? So my strategy right now is literally just wait and see what happens. I'm waiting around. I'm just looking at the, the chain, look, watching the price go up. Price just did like a 200 X on the Ethereum proof of work chain, but it's again, got $60,000 of liquidity and the infrastructure and community is not quite over there. The hex community seems to be really fragmented about this. A lot of people screaming at each other online, but you know, by waiting, by just waiting and seeing what happens, it's kind of a win-win for you, right? Because if you wait and see and Ethereum proof of work gets even more popular and the hex price goes up even more, well, congratulations. Now you just waited, you didn't dump it and you just, you have all this expensive hex on another chain now. Um, or if you wait and 
if w gets rugged or something bad happens well hey at least you didn't connect to any sketchy smart contracts and you uh you didn't do anything so you didn't lose any money uh so i guess i don't really know what the the big deal is of, of, with just waiting right i don't understand why that's a controversial opinion i don't really think it is but i think you know it is a little bit risky just understand the risk if you're putting new dollars into a brand new chain just know that it could all go to zero or it could all dip 99.9 percent .9%. not maybe not zero but it could all dip pretty heavily in these illiquid markets in a chain that you know could have hash rate issues it could literally just get 51 percent attacked i don't know if people remember ethereum classic which forked off of ethereum in 2016 but after that chain forked it was like the laughing stock of being 51% attacked all the time. Like there were always these 51% attacks because people could just buy enough hash rate to have more than 51% of it. I don't know. It's like, we gonna haven't happen? had a good history with forks and, and cryptocurrency in general. We've not had a good history with forks, which is why, you know, a lot of people were shitting on polls to begin with was the fact that crypto does not have a good history with forks in general. Uh, generally when there's a fork there is a dominant chain and there is a uh loser chain and even with polls coming out it's like people people were thinking then that you know they were going to remove all of their eth liquidity and put it in the polls and my suggestion from the start when pulse was announced why choose because the sum of the two is going to be greater than either one and if you pick one you got a 50 50 chance of picking the wrong one so imagine when bitcoin split into bitcoin cash and you chose bitcoin cash instead how good would you be doing but if you would have kept both you would have never made the wrong decision so you would have had both so crypto has not had a good history with forks one chain usually loses and one becomes dominant in this case we've got all of these different chains so which one yeah. do you think in the end is going to be the winner well i remember the fork wars in bitcoin when bitcoin forked off and it was bitcoin cash there was a whole bunch of hype around bitcoin cash for a, like maybe a month or two maybe even longer and it lost in the middle of the uh, uh bull market so that was a lot different and then there was bitcoin gold and bitcoin diamond and bitcoin god and then everyone thought they could make bitcoin private years. you get to, yeah bitcoin private i remember that uh you get diminishing returns out of these things the more you try to fork stuff the less attention and economic energy anyone can focus into just one chain um now with pulse chain it literally is different because we've got so much already built in the pipeline like it's preloaded with a full community a full infrastructure set of useful applications like lending platforms derivative products you know over a hundred different products are already committed to launching on there and they've already had stuff running on 137 <laughs> Thanks. That's uh, very 137. Specific. Yeah. Did your research. And, uh, you know, we've got over 100 YouTubers out there. Um, I don't see any of that with ETHW. I don't see anybody, you know, banging the drum for ETHW, carrying the torch for it. I don't even know who the figurehead is for it. I've never heard of them. Um, I don't know if they're publicly out there promoting ETHW, but. It just it just seemed like it was kind of rushed to market to me. And yeah, maybe I just don't know. Maybe I just wasn't paying attention behind the scenes to everything going on. But uh, it just seems like there's a lot more thought, planning, development, community infrastructure being built for Pulse Chain that isn't really around yet on ETHW. And hey, if all that stuff gets built and if the hash rate gets stronger and if more people start believing in it and if hexakins all bond their liquidity, if the origin address comes in, yeah, I would change my mind. I'd be like, hell yeah, more free coins more free expensive coins, but you know, hex going up 200 X on $60,000 liquidity doesn't really excite me too much. Like I I'm just, I'm wary of telling people, Hey, everybody check out this new shiny object. You got to get into, e you know, hex W like, I don't want to say that to people because I could be telling people to buy the top or close to the top. I have no idea. Well, you know, you could have angry whale dumpers that just decide that they don't want anything to do with it whatsoever and they don't think twice of the price and just decide they're going to exit and that wrecks everybody that that was trying to buy up the the new chain, you know. If you got yeah. somebody with 100 100,000, you know, <laughs> or 100 100 million freaking hacks and they just say, "You know, no, I just don't like it at all." Sell and, and then yeah. the price gets rough, you know. 
Yeah. And yeah. and they might not care whether they get two dollars and fifty cents out of it. They might not care. They might not value it at all. So it all depends on how people decide they value it over time. And that does take time. It's great when these things come out. It it gets a lot of people's interest. But you know what? Uh right now, personally, I'm focused on building my position on Ethereum, the original, because that's the one that's going to get the copies onto Pulse. And the other forks are not getting those copies onto Pulse. And I do think in the end of these fork wars, Pulse is going to be the predominant chain. And you probably want as much economic energy over there that that you're going to want. You know, you're going to want it. You're going to want it copied over there. The other thing is yeah. where Pulse will be different. And I'm going to say it and I'm going to put myself out there and I'm going to say there probably will be a one to one hex liquidity bonding from the start which will prevent all this arbitrage craziness that's going on right now, because I'm sure somebody's sitting back right now watching this and going, no, we, we can't have all this chaos in this. Yeah. Yeah. Mix. And hey, Johnny, I'm, hearing, I'm hearing in some weird stuff about the chat. Um, can you guys not see me in the chat? Cause like, so what's weird is that there's only uh, 24 people watching. We usually have a lot more than that. And, you know, I don't know if, um, and then there's some people in the, in the chat saying any Rug. day now rug. Nope. Damn. We've been talking for 15 minutes. Oh, well. oh okay. So Maddie said that all of YouTube, um, Okay, so all of YouTube Live is down. <laughs> Shit. Well, man, let's just do a pre-recorded conversation. We I think it's recorded. It's just fine. <laughs> that works out. <laughs> okay, this. Will well, be... I didn't want to interrupt you when you were on a roll. Anyway, that was kind of. Yeah, it's like, yep, there he goes. He's on a roll. Let him go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, I, I just got it. I got it all out in the first fifteen minutes. So uh, <laughs> I don't know, guys. Like, sorry, sorry, you missed all that. Um, I was but we were, we were talking you. about getting getting your coins copied over to Pulse, and if you put your coins on these other chains, they're not going to be copied. Um, I put myself out there and said I expect that you know we're going to get the one to one ratio. Well, how do you feel about the ratioing? The ratio is important. The ratio of what, which two coins? Hex, well, hex to hex. hex. Yeah, hex to hex ratio is literally the main thing that matters. Um, or you know, the OA could essentially vote with their money on whether or not it believes in ETHW by choosing which thing to bond liquidity to. So if the OA decided to bond liquidity to ETH, if it bonded the, in, in the HEX and ETH pair, he basically would be saying, hey guys, you might want to cash out your HEX into ETHW and then sell your ETHW into ETH and then sell your ETH for more HEX on the Ethereum chain. But if the OA decides, you know, do that little circular route. But if uh, the OA decides to bond hex to hex, then that would tell me, holy shit, he actually believes in ETHW as well. He's got some confidence and then he wants hex to be expensive on that chain too. But knowing Richard, he's a very technical guy. He's a very technically minded person. He's seen every scam. He's literally tracking every hack that's ever happened in crypto. And there's a new one almost every single day. The last thing he wants is for anything bad on his reputation where people could point to him and say, you recommended something that, you know, got hacked or I lost money on. So he's going to protect his reputation at all costs. Same with me. That's why I'm not telling people to ape into Hex W because I don't know. He might be buying the top. You might not be. It might go up another thousand X from here. I don't, I have no idea, right? It, it might reach price parity with Hex on Ethereum, but even if it does reach price parity with Hex on Ethereum, there's still such little liquidity, which is why I would need to see that millions of dollars of liquidity coming from the OA, not just, you know, 60 K worth, you know, 60 K worth is, is basically nothing. nothing. Right. You know, you could, one whale. Could well, there's the difference between, pay. there's the difference between like providing with the base pair or the native coin and just providing the liquidity between hex and hex. I don't think it's harmful for the OA to provide liquidity uh hex versus hex because they have both sides of those coins and that would probably be the most stable coin on the network if they so chose to do it i don't think it would cost them anything to do it really 
but so that brings the question of why aren't they you know yeah anybody could and the oa easily could he, i mean it's five days old right again that, mm -hmm. that goes back to the wait and see and i'm sure even the oa is in the same boat of waiting and seeing like we're all just waiting to see i just you know when i see people out here saying that hex w is the greatest thing since sliced bread you know go buy it now i get it if you want to buy up your position and become like a hex w whale <laughs> because it only costs you like 500 dollars or whatever like i don't know that i just made that number up <laughs> if you want to just walk in you know a tiny little position chuck 500 bucks at it and maybe one day that's that's your moon bag if, if this whole ETH w thing works out be my guest i'm not telling you what to do like you're a big boy you're a grown up you make your own decisions um but to me it's like 50 50 or maybe even like 60 40 that it doesn't work out like it's not i don't have a lot of faith that it will whereas with not pulse chain i'm like 99.999 confident you know what i mean so it's on the so he has every incentive in the world to make sure that that, that works and that yeah the, so so basically now here's the other other end of the spiel if the oa chooses not it's not to participate and and not to provide liquidity and not make that pairing does that degrade the brand of hex because hex would be not worth much on that chain say that again so it'd be like monopoly money over there hex will not be anything on that chain so does that make hex a failure the would you not be preserving your brand if if you chose not to buy liquidity would you not be preserving your brand would you let your brand degrade no so this is this is what I'm trying to figure out. Is this kind of a forced play where the OA kind of has to step in to preserve it so Hex isn't failing on one chain so people can point at it and go nah 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 nah. I don't think people would point at the side chains and ever say that like it's down 90%. Yeah. That, that would be really easy to make a rebuttal to. You know what I mean? Like if Hex is down everything's 90%, dead over there, yeah. Yeah, it's like okay, you literally yeah, that argument makes no sense, even to a very pleb person like that argument still makes no sense but even would it would it be would it be better to go ahead and pair it and that be the only successful thing over there on that chain exactly hey the marketing value of just the eyeballs on holy crap there's actually someone using this oh my god it's the hexagons first of all that i could see a lot of people laughing at that like oh look at those stupid hexagons using ETHW, right but then i could see you know everyone's an opportunist everyone's a speculator and in the bear market people are feeling pretty wrecked right now they're looking for any way they can to make a quick buck myself included guys I, I i fall into this trap too like i'm not above it yeah it helps having more money it helps like literally having a, a safety net so that i can sit back and watch things a little more and not feel like i have to jump the gun and participate but damn if i'm not a little tempted to participate you know what i mean like i'm seeing all this stuff happening and i still feel that itch i'm like oh man maybe i can just get a couple thousand dollars out of this right now if i just dump all my hex over there you know what i mean like i can just you know, I can extract money right now or I can just wait. And I'm like, okay, I'm probably just going to wait. Um, or, you know, by, by all means, if you want to dump your hex now, if that's good for you, you'll be happy with that. Um, dump it. Just no, just don't cry if it does another 5X from here and then drops 90%. <laughs> or maybe it does another 5X from here and then it doesn't ever drop. Sometimes <laughs> people, even if they make free money in crypto, they'll still be upset that they didn't make more free money. They didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> that happened with uniswap right everybody got a free uniswap airdrop i made like four grand overnight and then it went up like 5x so i could have made 20 grand and uh everybody was crying and saying oh you told me to sell it at uh four grand and now it's 20 it's like yeah. oh shit, man yeah yeah screw you screw you for giving me four grand coffee screw you for yeah. telling me about four grand i could have sold that shit for 20 but no <laughs> no i only right, got bro. four grand <laughs> You're right, bro. You could have timed the absolute top and you could have done all that, but it was me. It was my, it was my fault. Dirty old crypto coffee. So, uh, no, that's what I mean. Everyone's got to just be an adult here and just realize what you're doing. I know. And like, what is it, your free money is not free enough for you. You want more free money? Like Jesus Christ, get it together, people. Come on. But, uh, and, and that's the thing, you know, the money over there, I look at it as like an airdrop, like free money. Uh, you know, I, I'm, 
not necessarily going to invest more into it. Uh, like I said, I'm primarily looking at making sure that I get more value over on Pulse Day One. And the only way to currently do that is to stay on the stay in my own lane. And I'm staying in my own lane. I accept my free money on the other exchanges. I hope they work out. I really honestly do. I hope that the people that are aping in, thinking they're getting better prices, some of that holds for them. Uh, you know, but there's no way to know. And it's hard to compare pricing because of the way the ratios are. And 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 this is a good good test run for people to see how ratios can be thrown off and how getting in and out and bridging across the network can be a pain in the ass. And by the time you do, you might not have as much money as you think you do. So watching numbers on a screen is watching numbers on a screen until you can actually utilize it. They're just numbers on a screen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Oh, cards blames Mercury retrograde. And I, I do too. And I blame the Shemitah, which <laughs> apparently if you guys are following all that stuff, it's uh, it ends tomorrow. So don't worry, boys and girls. Shemitah is almost over and we can go back to normal. You heard anything about that stuff, Johnny? Yeah. And, and I, I, I got a theory on that. If a lot of very, very wealthy, devout Jewish people have a lot of money and they all believe the same thing, then yes, it can have an effect on the market. Yeah, if they're all know, pouring their money out because they believe a certain thing. We see it in crypto, right? You know, when people pretty, believe uh, the price is going the, down, they sell thinking they're going to buy back cheaper. Uh, it, it, it happens in the crypto space, you know. If you if you want to live gloom and doom, it becomes self fulfilling prophecies, and these things do happen because enough people share that belief in it that they make it happen. Uh, that's the best explanation of shemitah I've probably ever heard. It's like, <laughs> yeah, it's Jewish mysticism, so it's not, it's woo woo, reading the tea leaves, you know, the chicken bones and all that stuff. But like at the same time, self fulfilling prophecies do happen, and a lot of uh, rich people uh, the, of that belief. Um, decide to use it as a what is it like a jubilee type of year? Maybe maybe there's some degree of truth to it, but I don't know. Yeah, I mean I mean if you've got rich and powerful people that believe all the same thing, and they behave a certain way during a certain period of time, you're going to get that correlation because it it's because they believe it. It's not because yeah. it, it's all everything believed. You know, it's basically like a mind. It's like a little seed that floats around in people's minds. It's like a spore and it's, it's, it depends on how many people like get like infected with that spore or maybe pollinated is a better word than infected. But uh, you know what I mean? It, it's just a, a mind virus that if it spreads to enough people, everyone acts the same way. Well, it's, well, this is part of the reason why I don't like when people throw out the technical analysis and they're just like, Oh, X is going to a penny. X is going to a penny. Because now everybody thought every tons of people just sold their bags at 10 cents, drove the price all the way down to five cents, thinking that they were going to buy it back at a penny. They were going to 10x their bag. Well, it only goes down so far. And then, you know, the people that are waiting for a penny usually don't get it because it stops right about halfway point. And uh, then they find themselves buying back at 20 cents later. So, but it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah, you can force prices down when you're talking about a small community like ours and you start telling people that the prices are going to go down and they start believing it. So they yeah. start behaving that way, you know? Yeah. I, yeah. I just thought we were stronger than that. And I guess we're not. We're really not. <laughs> no. Why would you think that, Johnny? Come on. <laughs> because, you know, <laughs> I, the, the people like you... Yeah, uh, yeah, people like crypto graphics, uh, well, you know, people like, you know, let me put it this way. Like there's, um, I guess what it all boils down to is not only one, do you believe in ETHW long-term? Do you think it's going to be around in a couple of years? If so, Hey, maybe it makes sense for you to buy. But after asking yourself that belief question of, do I believe ETHW will st uh, stand the test of time or not? You essentially have three options. You can do nothing. That's my option that I'm doing. I'm you on the can, do nothing list. Yeah, for now, you, you, can dump, you can dump all your hacks, probably make a couple of grand out of it and go home and have a, a great payday, you know, maybe take your girlfriend out to dinner and uh, just have a good time. Or you can go buy a bunch of hacks W. You can either buy into the chain, sell the chain or do nothing. I think do nothing is great because you can always sell the chain later if it gets more, even more successful or you didn't get rugged, basically. 
Um, but for people buying the chain now or buying hex on the chain, it's risky. Uh, and just like people selling hex on the chain now, the risk is that hex goes higher. So that's really all it boils down to. Um, yeah, I don't know. What do you think? We think alike. I, I don't know what else to say. It's, it, it's <laughs> funny to watch coffee sometimes because it's like, and, and everybody freaking like and subscribe for God's sakes, because you guys bitch at me because I don't do any shows. <laughs> I don't need to. He's right here. <laughs> yeah. We agree on so many points. It would be nice though. The more the merrier, you know, but uh, I, you know, it's so crazy right now in the community too. Everyone's fragmented. Everyone's running around like a chicken with their head cut off because prices are down. We're all frantic and bored. Um, I just want to stay calm. Usually that's what, that's what helps and start trying to put out messages of positivity and unity community. And, uh, we're all on the same team, right? We're on the hex tribe, the pulse chain tribe. You know, people say tribalism exists in crypto. Of course it does that we're, we're wired for tribalism. And so we're all part of the same tribe. And so it's how you we can survive. Fly. That's how you complete tasks that no one person can. That's that's what it comes down to, right? That's uh yeah, that's human psychology. That's uh if you ever read the book Sapiens, that's basically what they a lot of what they talk about. So we can't help but be tribal. We can't help but be biased. So let's lean into that and let's just make sure that we're always analyzing ourselves. One thing I like about the hex community is this immune system aspect of it, where when a new idea comes up, we all take the time to really thoroughly get to the bottom of it and try to assess the situation. Um, and I think we can do that without just calling everyone like an asshole or you know, I could think of worse words to say, but I don't want to get kicked off of YouTube. Um, basically, let's just try to not, let's just try to have, See, you can't, you can't start an argument with your stupid because <laughs> yeah, that, that, yeah. that doesn't end the argument. Well, the minute you yeah. say you're stupid, it, forget anything that follows there after that. Right. Or stop yeah. being stupid. You, you know, the word stupid comes in brain, brain shut down and then it's fight. Right. So it doesn't, uh, it doesn't do you good to 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 do that. Yeah. What if, what if, what if? We can play what if, whatever, right? If you observe, you actually can see what's going on, but don't feel compelled to action. People get like, people feel compelled to action. Especially if they're very active people, they feel that they have to do something or make some kind of move because sitting on your ass is not rewarded. And then in crypto, it actually tends to be the opposite. Being compelled to action generally gets you wrecked and sitting on your ass doing nothing is better. What did, who did better? The people that bought Bitcoin back in 2011 and forgot they owned any. That's who did better. Then the guys who back on the no businesses and everything else on it. I'm, I'm hearing some people say that uh, we might be back. So that's good. They want to know, know, know who would win in a fight. Um, how much do you weigh? How much do I weigh? Yeah. 165. Yeah, it would be, uh, you'd probably win that fight. But hey, have you ever taken wrestling or anything? I did. And I, and I was in uh, grade school, actually. I was, uh, yeah, I, I, I was good. I quit because it wasn't fair. <laughs> yeah, I got you. I didn't like I didn't like my mom sitting next to other kids' moms. Yeah. Uh, and and yeah, and, and I'm not a violent person. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I don't I don't like to fight. They're just trolling in the chat. Finbear says it, it looks like I'm I'm so handsome that it looks like I've never been hit. Um, Johnny's no, got a, a split nose. I've had my nose broke three times. I've been in all kinds of martial arts classes for for many years. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm not the kind of person <laughs> that picks a fight. Yeah. I've done Muay Thai kickboxing for a while. I've gotten punched in the face a few times and uh, probably not as much as you, though. <laughs> anyway. We used, to, we used to line up and do the rib exchanges, you know, where you, yeah. where you, you go like this and your buddy kick. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. Dumb shit. All right, guys. Well, if you want to hear all the good stuff, uh, go rewind 30 minutes because we talked, we pretty much talked all about it. Um, I guess we can just recap. Yeah. For what's it called for Ethereum W hex to really survive and, and thrive. I just need to see more stuff that makes me more confident. I need more time. You know, we got to wait a couple months, see where the cards fall, see where the dust settles. And 
again, it's going to take liquidity. If the OA wanted to bond liquidity, that'd be legendary. Uh, it also depends what the OA bonds liquidity to. Is he going to bond it? Would he bond it to Hex or to uh, Ethereum W? Would he do the Hex ETH W pair or the Hex Hex, Hex pair? Hex. Uh, alter- um, additionally, more more developers, more promotion, more f- general faith from the public that this chain is going to work out and that it's not just a cash grab from the miners, which I kind of think it is. And um, yeah, just better infrastructure, better... more more proven safe things. Like I'm not going to trust any bridge that's on the EW chain, any trustless bridge. In this rare case, I can actually say that I trust centralized exchanges more than bridges uh, for the purpose of getting assets between, you know, Ethereum and Ethereum W. In this rare case, I actually, uh, yeah, I actually would. I mean, as long as you're on the centralized exchange for five minutes or less or 15 minutes or less, and just withdrawing and, and getting in and getting out. That's probably the best way to do it. But again, guys, I'm not going to show the links. I mean, if you want to figure all that stuff out, you're all adults. You can all figure it out. You all know how to do a search in the Telegram chats. So, yeah, there are DEXs that exist and there are centralized exchanges that exist for uh, hacks on both Ethereum Fair and Ethereum Proof of Work. And on top of that, app.icosa.pro does support uh, Ethereum Fair and Ethereum Proof of Work if you want to do some end staking over there. Maybe you even might want to do some EESing. I don't know, but uh, be very, very careful, guys. Be extremely careful that you're not connected to the wrong network, because I, I know right now someone's going to connect to the wrong network and they're going to emergency end stake their hacks on at the Ethereum chain, and that's going to be a real bad day because they thought they were on ETH Fair or ETH Proof of W. Maybe not you guys. I'm not talking directly to you, but someone out there is going to mess that up. So, I mean, you have more than enough rope to hang yourself with here. Ask yourself if like making a couple grand right now is worth it uh, for the risk. If it's not, just make your own decision. You know what I mean? The OA could do a lot of moves, though. You got to keep in mind the sacrifice address also got a significant amount of stable coins. And those stable coins could be used on those networks. Those stable coins by themselves could be used to pump price to parity if it wanted to. So it's it's very interesting to me that it has not made any moves. And I'm going to follow that lead. Yeah, I mean, Richard's obviously Richard's looking at it. He does not mm-hmm. he doesn't live under a rock. But when you have that kind of power to influence a market like that, you also want to take the same position that I'm taking which is the do nothing, <laughs> the wait and see move. But hey, you guys, if you want to play around, by all means, I'm not the guy telling you what to do. You're an adult. And on the other do. spectrum of things, if you're speculating on moves that may or may not happen, then you might want to make a move before said OA does. But you are speculating that you got a 50-50 chance that, that you're right. Yeah. You know, yeah. So you are gambling. Have no right. doubt, you are gambling. Oh, yeah, totally. I mean... 50-50 seems pretty much like pretty close to the odds that I would give it, you know? It's like, let's not forget, I'll recap too for people that weren't here earlier or that didn't hear earlier. You're going to hear this all. I'm going to post the whole pre-recorded video. Everything is getting recorded, guys, so so don't worry. But there's also just the like the inherent risk of 51% attacks. I mean, from what it looks like, EW has maybe 10% of the hash rate that Ethereum had beforehand. Hash rate's dropping fast, and you got to ask yourself, are these miners going to continue to mine EW? Um, there is something to be said for, yeah, they might continue to mine EW because you know, they might, they might want to pump the price of EW, and they might want to have some exit liquidity there. But after it gets a, an, an initial pump, are they going to want to keep doing that, or are they going to slowly migrate towards other proof-of-work chains that are more profitable? Like even Ethereum Classic. You, a lot of miners probably went over to Ethereum Classic already. Um, because you could tell because they're they're not there anymore. A lot of miners have left. Maybe they're mining Litecoin or something. I don't know. But I don't talk to miners. Miners aren't necessarily public. Um, whoever created Ethereum W is not necessarily that public. I haven't really heard about it. So the whole thing seemed like a rushed cash grab for miners, not like it was intended for any kind of use, uh, any, any serious use long term. And again, I, could, I would love to be wrong. The beauty here is that if I'm wrong, uh, we still got coins. It's awesome. It's, I'd love to be wrong. And then, you know, if everyone calls me an idiot for doing nothing, it's like, well, I'm, I actually still win because now I have all this expensive hex on Ethereum proof of work. So, 
I, I, the way I, I see it, if you all want to run over the hill first and catch the first line of fire, you're more than welcome to. I ain't yeah. doing it. <laughs> yeah, and like if you want to throw a hundred bucks in or five hundred bucks into EW, like I wouldn't do it. I'd rather put that money into an asset I'm more confident in. But if you want to risk it for the biscuit, you guys go right ahead. For the biscuit. <laughs> That's right. That's right. It's a risky biscuit, guys. Hot pockets, pizza pockets, or empty pockets? What? <laughs> pizza pockets all the way. Dude. They're talking pizzas yeah, and bagels. Don't there. talk to miners, guys. I don't talk to miners. Can't, can't cancel me, Hexo. Not yet. Uh, let's see. Are we gonna get our copies on Pulse Chain from ETH W? Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> I think that might have been a joke, but actually, if anyone's wondering, like, oh, are my copies of the copies going to be copied on Pulse Chain? No, 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 no. Imagine a fork is like a like a straight line. Like this is the Ethereum blockchain, right? And a fork is just something that splits out of the splits off of the blockchain, you know, as it's going along. And so Pulse Chain itself is a fork of Ethereum. Uh, ETHW itself is a fork of Ethereum, but they're all branching off of the timeline of Ethereum. They're not branching out like, yeah. No, you, you don't get like multiple, uh, you know, iterations of your force. You know, I actually saw that where people thought that they were going to get like Pulse was going to fork ETH Fair and ETH W and ETH. No. Are you freaking kidding me, guys? No, dude, it's no. it's it's all forking off Ethereum. So if you want your copies on Pulse, it needs to be on Ethereum, not Maybe it, Ethereum W or Ethereum F. A good way to put it might be, you know, when you copy a, a blockchain. And you copy the system state you can only copy one system state you can't copy you can't overlay like three different system states on top of each other so you're probably going to want to pick the ethereum system state the original ethereum system state it's going to be the longest chain yeah pop my bags mr coffee yeah everybody wants me to say eth w to the moon hex w to the moon look man if you guys want to pump it up go ahead I, bump it up i got a lot of hex over there <laughs> So, I got a lot of hex. I got a lot of icosa. I got a lot of hedron. I hate changing my damn tab fifty freaking times. You know that, that is how many yeah. how many forks are we gonna have, dude? It's like, oh, did I end it on this chain? Did I end it on this chain? Did I end that's it on this thing, chain? That's did where you I gotta be really it? careful. It's crazy. That's also where you gotta be careful because you know I'll have three tabs open up. One one's on ETH proof of work. One's on ETH fair, and one's on ETH W. And I'm like, oh wait, wait, which one am I looking at again? Because I'm looking at the wrong one, and I end a stake that I didn't mean to end if I emergency at stake, right? Because it's something you should never, ever, ever do. But if I was somebody that wanted to do that, I better make damn sure I'm on a, At least I'm on ETH proof, proof of work or proof of stake or proof. Uh, sorry. Proof of uh, fair. ETH fair. Jesus. Too many ETHs guys. There's too many ETHs. I wonder if this stops here. Do you think this stops here for a while? Do you think pulse is going to be the last one? Or do you think when we get pulse, somebody's going to fork pulse? <laughs> I could see that happening. I could see. Oh that God, dude! It's gonna be Fork City over here. We're just gonna be all. We're gonna be Forkaholics. Uh, yeah. So in uh, that case, you would want your stuff on ETH. So then, when it forks over to Pulse, that if Pulse gets forked, you get double your coin. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's gonna do it. Oh God, that would be stupid. Shit, man. But I mean, yeah, there is something to be said for this is a nice test run in some degrees. We have learned some things. Like we've gotten proof that stable coins don't hold their value for shit on a fork network. Like I thought that was pretty, pretty safe like, to say, but now it's pretty certain to say. Like you're lucky if you if you have a hundred thousand dollars in stable coins, you're lucky if you get 10 bucks out of that. You know what I mean? Um, or maybe even less. And that's one of the, a mistake I see a lot of people making sometimes on um, Kyber Network. They'll say, oh, look, Hex is worth like $9. And it's like, no, it's worth $9 of a stable coin that's worth $0.00001. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what I was talking about doing all the math. People are, people are talking about, well, it's this price or it's that price. Well, you know what? Hex is like $3 on Pulse Test. Anybody want to tell me how I get my $3 out of test that? I can't. Yeah. You know, so... Yeah. That, that has to do with the ratios and the activity that's going on within that system based on the stable coins that are in that system, which are not exchangeable for real dollars. So, yeah. and the, the stable coins on proof of work are not equivalent to actual dollars. So it, it, it offsets all the pricing and all the ratios of everything. Yeah, true. 
True. So you have to do math. You have to really do math if you want to go over there and try to figure out whether or not you're really actually getting the deal or not. Yeah, you guys, you got to multiply things and divide things. It's it's crazy out there. It's crazy. Hexo says uh, actually a pretty good point. We also have proof that Hexkins are the only ones still left here. <laughs> like, <laughs> can you, uh, can you, uh, I mean, honestly, check out uh, here. Let me pull it up real quick. Let me pull up the old uh, DexScreener.com, shall we? DexScreener.com. This <laughs> proof is of Hexkins. Where are the ones left? Hex is number one. Hedron is uh, – where's Hedron on here? Oh, number three. But look, also at the same time, guys <laughs> – how much how much uh liquidity is here two thousand dollars in hedron fifty eight thousand dollars <laughs> so it's like cool but now is that two thousand bucks in real dollars or is that two thousand bucks in ETHW dollars oh no that's two thousand that's real dollars that that's is real dollars, dollars. Okay. yeah yeah now otherwise it'd be fucking astronomical you know but uh yeah, guys, and then it says they're using the Ethereum proof of work actual price from a centralized exchange because that's really the only safe way to price it right now. Again, because there's no bridge, you have to price these things using a centralized exchange. So for ETH proof of work, they're using FTX as their price oracle. And for Ethereum Fair, they're using MEXC for their price oracle. <laughs> Check out ETH Fair, dude. It's uh you thought ETHW is wild. ETH Fair is ETH Fair is basically just the, the late night strip club of crypto. So we've got <laughs> So you've got uh, Hex still on the top here with five thousand dollars of liquidity. You've got. I think that ETH welfare. ETH welfare. <laughs> <laughs> not bad, not bad. Um, to be honest, guys, I'm already out of Ethereum Fair. I, I already, like, I don't believe. Like, I have even less confidence in Ethereum Fair than I do in ETHW. And maybe you know, again, if I'm wrong, you guys get to laugh at me. That's fine. You guys can all tell me. What I haven't even I over. The old fair yet? I mean, ETH fair yet? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, ETH fair is just like, like what? Like it's another proof of work chain. Like I, I heard something about Justin Sun from Tron being behind it. Uh, I don't know. That's enough. So, yeah. I got a couple grand out of ETH fair and I'm, I'm happy with that. And if it, if it pumps even harder then Shame on me. I shouldn't have sold. But you know what? I'm, I'm just going to be happy with what I got because uh, it's free money that landed in my lap. And if you get some free money, guys, don't don't be sad if your free money could have been more free money. Just try to be happy with what you got. Like, Be happy with what you got. If like you, like, well, I think that Richard even tweeted this. It's like if you think about all the opportunities you've ever missed out on in crypto. We talked about the uni air, airdrop earlier. People were crying because they sold other uni for, for four grand at first and they didn't know they could sell it for 20 grand later. It's like just be happy you got four thousand dollars that just fell out of the sky onto your lap like some people's free money isn't free enough for them and uh they just want they just are gonna like it's a negative thought pattern so it's really self-defeating if you're just thinking about the what ifs of yeah i wish i would have bought the absolute bottom and sold the absolute top too you can't do it like no one does that if, if you if you show me proof that you bought the absolute bottom and sold the absolute top i will uh i don't know what will i do <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you, I'll give you coffee gives you a private lap dance there you go <laughs> dm me i'll uh i'll, I'll do i'll work out something real special uh no nah, man it's just um what is ETH fair like why why make ETH fair because everybody's forking mad man <laughs> Hold on. Let me just Google Ethereum Fair to see if they have like a value prop on their website. Ether They're just forking Fair. mad, man. They want to make some money. <laughs> Ethereum Fair. Keep proof of work for everyone. Okay, wasn't that what Ethereum proof of work was going to do? <laughs> Same much. value prop, literally. Uh, oh, man, their website, <laughs> their website looks rough. It's just like a real... like. Yeah, this reminds me of the ICO days, this website right here. This reminds me a lot of like the Bitcoin fork. Days. Well, dude, they've got a website. They're going to the moon. <laughs> they do have a website. They do have a website. They've got yeah, a telegram. White website. papers and anonymous founders and a yeah. pretty picture. God, that coin's going to go. And you know yeah. what? Everybody in 2017 thought they were geniuses because all they had to do was throw a dart at a dart board, pick a coin, <laughs> and that shit was going straight to the moon. And now they got yeah. followers that don't know shit about what they're talking about. And here we are now trying to <laughs> save the crypto space from itself. 
Yeah, people forget pretty quickly. You know, there were there were fork wars back in 2017, uh, 2016. Ethereum forked previously as well. It was due to a hack in uh, the DAO contract. Um, yeah, people tended to keep building on Ethereum and they kind of neglected Ethereum Classic. And Ethereum Classic to this day is still a money grab for miners and to this day is is traded. Um, the gains aren't that great. You know, Ethereum Classic might have only done a, I don't know how many exits it did, but far, far lower than Ethereum, obviously, even despite going through multiple cycles. And uh, I don't know of any serious developer that's building on Ethereum Classic. Just like I don't really know of any serious developers building over on ETH proof of work. Like you could say, oh, well, there's a DEX. Yeah. Okay. Do you know how easy it is to just take Uniswap and add a different network to it? That's all they did. Um, yeah, there's bridges, but bridges get hacked all the time and they're brand new and unaudited. I found a bridge the other day, but there was literally a warning on the website saying this bridge is not audited. Use at your own risk. So it's like, if you want to take that risk, you go ahead. But then also, hey, guess what? You bridge over your representation token on Ethereum. There might not even be any liquidity for that representation token. You know, you just yeah. got a, a like a representative token, a bridge token. Like you just got basically hex W on Ethereum, but there's nowhere to sell your hex W on Ethereum, right? So just don't even. I would stay away from the bridges, especially like if you're going to stay away from anything. ETH Classic was the original, and Ethereum was the upgrade. In most cases in technology, the software gets updated. The merge well, in that case, worked. particularly te technically, that wasn't much of a, an upgrade. It was just forking in some stolen coins. That is true, but the but then you get the merge, which is also the upgrade, and then when yeah. Pulse Chain comes, that's going to be the next upgrade. Yeah, yeah, Pulse Chain is going to be huge, and I feel like people are thinking that I'm like, or that we are telling them to do something like I'm not telling you guys to do anything. You're all full grown adults and you're, you're, you're like, you're placing, too much telling them to do something. you're placing way too much importance on what some people on YouTube think. Right. Because in this case, we're all learning together. It's brand new. Um, and I'm not trying to rain on anyone's parade. I'm not trying to ruin the party. Right. I want money. I want to make money out of this too. I just think that the more likely way to make money is to basically dump everything on ETHW and, and, buy it back on e ethereum i think that's the more likely way but for now i'm just gonna wait because you know hex could go higher hex could go higher i think the most likely thing is that ethw doesn't work out but it could and uh, if i'm wrong then i'm actually in really good shape so i'm looking yeah. at the comments now too it's lazy to use anything other than ethw trading to bring value in and out. I don't get that one. <laughs> I lost brain cells with that one. Uh, come get me alien says, don't go chasing waterfalls. Please stick to the rivers and the lakes that you're used to. <laughs> yes, sir. Great. That's stuck in my head now. <laughs> oh, I was talking to Hex earlier and I, so I, mean, I was in the uh, telegram chats for some of these uh, coins. And I swear to God, some of these people posting in the telegram chats for ETH work and ETH fair. They got to be like pump and dump groupers, uh, pump and dump group people, because Hex is like proof of work chains are the future. And it's like, I literally saw people writing that like proof of work is, is the future. It's proof of work backwards. is God. I know, I know, I know. And I'm just thinking to myself, are these people really brainwashed into thinking that? Or like, is these must be some kind of pump and dump groups where people are all agreeing to get together and say all these good things about ETHW. It just seems very very weird how how excited everybody is and they're like oh ethw is going to be great we're going to do this and that and all these all these things are in the pipeline all these things are coming and i don't it kind of ethw kind of came out of nowhere i don't know many people really developing cool stuff on there um again maybe well, i just haven't maybe i haven't been paying attention so and if, if i'm well, wrong i get to get rich so that's the cool thing if i'm wrong i'm rich if i'm right i still get to cash something out <laughs> That, that proof of work narrative is becoming a, a narrative where uh, they're bragging about Bitcoin being the strongest proof of work chain now. It's the only one now that it has merged off sort of thing. And it's like, yeah. it, but it's interesting, right? So the there was a guy that we had in the community that just did the calculations on how long it's going to take for Bitcoin to become unprofitable. 
and it's very interesting to look at because what people fail to realize is that cost of electricity goes up as it becomes the difficulty gets harder and it's it, they need a higher price because they can't really sell their bitcoin at a loss where they have to shut off their miners so it's kind of like a self-defeating system actually because the cost continues to go up well you know if you run any business and your costs exceed your production then eventually you know it, it's unprofitable and, and the business shuts down that's what happens so yeah well then they say uh, the difficulty readjusts and everything but the the price also adjusts uh, along with that right like i don't top gun hex again i think that's the guy that did the uh did that analysis or, or does crunches the numbers on the spreadsheet Oh, okay. Yeah. He says Bitcoin's going to die in 15 years or less if it doesn't change. But the thing is too, people say Bitcoin's so immutable that the miners could just agree to fork in some code that yeah. benefits them even more. So they could just increase the mining rewards for themselves if they all agree. Um, they might have to in a couple, we'll see. By the time if, our, if uh, the system, if the system stays unchanged, that is, he is correct because it's no longer, it, it it does, you know, the calculations are there. It's 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 not sustainable, yeah. and uh, I mean, inflationary for the next 120 years as it sets. But to get that inflation, it costs more and more to dig deeper and deeper and deeper and mine deeper and deeper and deeper to get the coins. Yeah. So it, it, it's much more cost, much more effort. Some people, uh, hex made says, some people think proof of work um, is worth value because miners plus electricity plus labor. That's why they say it has value. That's true. I mean, that's a narrative meme. The reason things have value is because of social consensus that they do have yep. value. So the, the meme Waste of sacrificing electricity and proving that you've done work, that's a true meme. I and mean, Bitcoin does have value because it has proof of work. But Ethereum also has value because it has a different consensus mechanism, proof of stake. So you've got a bunch of people that have agreed that they think it's valuable by staking their by buying a bunch of coins and staking them. And that's their agreement, which doesn't hurt the environment. And it's still decentralized enough. You know, there's so much arguments about the consensus mechanism, but it really abstracts to social consensus. What do we believe? And some people believe in Bitcoin, and that's why Bitcoin is super expensive. And some people believe in Ethereum, which is why Ethereum still has a, a bunch of value tied up in it. And a lot it's, of people believe in Hex, which is why Hex has value. It's all just social consensus on these narrative memes that we all agree to, like these imagined realities, these shared fictions that we all agree to. It's it's not the waste that has the value that is the action that qualifies you for receiving that thing it is the what gives it value is its ability to be exchanged for something that you want to have that exchange ability to transfer it into something else that you want that that's sure. what gives it value yeah is it able to be accepted by others to be exchanged for goods and services well what you just said right there accepted by others you could even abstract that one layer farther and and that basically brings it back to what i said so is it accepted by others is the idea something that people mutually agree about yeah because if that's something that people two people agree about then the exchange can happen and it's really that simple it's like there's just all these arguments that are that are all kind of right they're all right but if i make something out of thin air uh, i make a pretty picture right and uh you decide that you want that and you give me cash for it it's yeah. it's it's because you like the picture it's not the amount of effort that i put into making that picture maybe that picture is just a dot on a piece of paper we right. see fine art gets sold all the time for ridiculous amounts of money that yeah. it's not worth these, but these the things all have value for it. Huh? They, these things all have value whether you agree that they yeah. have value or not because even if you don't agree that they have value some subset of people all collectively agrees that they do have value. So you can say Bitcoin is worthless, but the price chart is proving you wrong. Like reality proves yeah. you wrong. You could say Hex is worthless, but reality literally proves you wrong because you're just not in the cohort of people that agree and believe that Hex does have value. And just because you don't see it yet doesn't mean that it doesn't have the value. It just means you don't see it yet. Maybe you never will see it, but value is not your opinion there are a billion things that uh a billion things that people will buy that you will never even buying that doesn't mean that, that they don't have value that means you don't value it so value has nothing to do with personal opinion it has to do with the ability to exchange you know yeah yeah exactly. there's a place i mean i gotta tell you this matt there's a place it's literally called mooseberry mansion you know what they sell moose shit literally they sell oh, moose shit and somebody buys it so anything under the sun can have value uh can i ask have a market for it 
why are people buying all this moose shit? Because they turn it into little mooses. They glue them together and they make little mooses out of the moose berries <laughs> and people buy them. It's like a pet rock. You know, the whole pet know. rock thing, when people were actually buying $5 rocks, yeah. that was yeah. started between a competition between uh, two marketing students. One said the product is what matters. And the other one said it's the packaging that matters. Guess who won the argument? It was the packaging. Mm. It wasn't the product. If you wow. package it properly and sell it properly, you know, the, the, the marketing won. And they made a million dollars off Pet Rocks. It was a student project. <laughs> that's, that's hilarious. I mean, yeah, you're right. I mean, it's the same thing with everything. Pokemon cards, like all that stuff. It's just moose shit is something I've never heard before. Moose Perry Mansion is all... for real, dude. I couldn't believe it myself. Yeah, that's a new one. Why are some YouTubers and Hexicans obsessed with all these ETH forks and hex on those chains? Would it not would it not make a lot of sense and appreciation to focus on the existing and Paul Chain and Hex instead? Yeah, um, I think it would. I'd love, I mean, I think onboarding someone into Hex right now is the best thing you could do at the current moment in time for Hex and Paul's Chain in the future because you're building, you're building value, you're building awareness of it, and you're building awareness of the primary store value that's going to live on top of Paul's Chain in the future. So these are, I mean, to be honest, I'm focused on the forks because it's a bear market and I'm bored and I want some free money if I can get some free money. So all everyone's eyes are on this new shiny object or these two new shiny objects because they're really the only new novelty thing happening right now. They're the only new thing in town because it's literally the, almost the lowest of the low point in, in crypto markets. And uh, that's why people are focusing on it. So I'm going to make this video to try to get my thoughts out. And I'll make another video in the future if my thoughts change. But to, to wrap up, essentially what I think is that I just need more time to, to either get more or less confidence in ETHW. And that will determine, you know, things like liquidity providing, bridges, exchanges, like safer ways to do everything. Origin address pairing liquidity would be amazing. Um, and if that doesn't happen, then I'll consider just selling and giving up on ETHW, selling my hex W and uh, moving. Well, we're stuck over there regardless. We got 15 year stakes that are going to end over time. You can't eat yes, you don't get that's anything true. out of them. So we're I'm we're stuck really... with all of these chains for 15 years. That that's what pisses me off. We are stuck with these chains, whether we want to or not. <laughs> yeah, sometimes uh sometimes I feel that way too. But no, it's it's good though. I think it's gonna work out for everyone. I hope everyone's able to make some money out of this or extract some value. Whether or not your stance is ETHW is certainly gonna be the future or ETHW certainly has no future. I'm right in the middle, guys, and I stand to uh, make some gains either way. So I've already locked that in and we're just going to see what happens. Um, Maddie says Hex OG has already sold the fork. Well, you can't say that about every Hex OG, but maybe some Hex OG sold the fork. So then he says, uh, so everyone new needs to sell after them and then and buy after them on POS. What does that mean? Everyone new needs to sell after them and buy after them on POS. Wait, are you saying like the? Are you trying to say like hex OGs, hex OGs are like already sold running it. stuff and like being mm, like? No, I think you're I have not that. sold the fork. I haven't emergency unstaked any of my hex. I will be on that fork for 15 years. I'd consider now I'd somebody consider who it. might have liquidated a large amount of their position. Maybe uh, you know once. Yeah, we're, 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 I. I I, I think you're really heading down the wrong road there, Matty, if, if you want to start attacking people. I'm not the one driving a DeLorean, that's for sure. I don't know. I don't know if anyone's being attacked, but it's like it's easy to make these narratives that like all the hex OGs have this master plan. And it, it's really just a scattered group of individuals that are all trying to figure this shit out as we go along. Like it's really a lot less organized than I think some people think. Like if there's no cabal of us, then we're we're not all like calling each other and saying, Oh, hey, you wanna you wanna dump today? Let's all dump today. It's like People just dump whenever they feel like it. They buy whenever they feel like it. Believe it or not, I talk to these guys a lot less often than people might think. You know, I mean, even Johnny, it's been like what a month since we talked, or two two weeks or something. It's so it's been a while, two or three weeks. And we're we're two hours away from each other. We could actually <laughs> like go out and have a beer or something. Which yeah, we, exactly. We, we we will we will. If but, you, uh, you want to escape the city? I don't like going to Chicago, man. People get shot there. Nobody gets shot here. <laughs> Not as bad as you might think on the news, but uh, it depends where you live for sure. Depends I gotta drive live. through parts that I might get shot on my way to get to you. <laughs> my, yes, exactly. Gotta watch out. 
I'll make sure you're safe though. If you're ever in Chicago, I'll make sure you don't get shot. Don't worry, bro. <laughs> I, I appreciate that. I, I, I'd like to not be shot. Not getting shot is cool. Hey, Molly says, oh, geez, are scumbags. Yeah, exactly. Exactly, man. Oh, you were invited to the cabal? Damn. I missed my invite. Fuck. Damn it. I got to check my emails. <laughs> I haven't looked at them and like. What do I have to do to join? What do I have to do to join? Do I have to, do I have to raise a puppy from, from birth until it's five years old and then murder it? <laughs> That's so wrong, man. Is that what I have to do? Uh, um, I'm, I'm going to pass on the whole cabal thing. Actually, I'm I'm really happy to take a break from from doing shows and stuff. I have one more that I have to do. Uh, I agreed to go on with RH Max, and then I think I'm just gonna like stop for a bit. I mean, there's until I'm gonna observe going, what's going bro. on, but I just I'll don't really want to. It's a bear market. We got to get people in now. This is literally the best time to get in. You know, get in the space in general. I mean, hey, you want to get into ETH W? Be my guest, but. If you don't get into hex now i think you're leaving a lot of opportunity on the table personally obviously i don't click the button for you um but i'll be here throughout the whole bear market no matter how boring it is i'll be here every day 15 years 5555 days of hex you're not going to get rid of me guys you're not going to get rid of me i, I think I, I almost feel like we're bottoming bottoming because people are so frantic and crazy on twitter right now like i can just feel the tension in the air i can feel the anger and the uh directness um well, in Bitcoin, though, we haven't had the live emergency streams of the influencers watching the red candles go with the dumb fat on their faces going, guys, I don't know what happened. Oh, we don't have that yet. We got that last time. Why are we not getting it this time? Well, and if you got are... those of the miners shutting down the equipment, right? Yeah, yeah. So I think we got a ways to go in Bitcoin. Um well, I think the Hex tribe is not giving up. Like we in the last bear market, we saw a lot of YouTubers just straight up give up, but that's because they weren't focused on, they didn't have their eyes on one particular ecosystem. They were just, it was epic shit coinery left and right. And that's why they gave up is because they got too scatterbrained and too, uh, too wrecked essentially on all these altcoins. Being a Bitcoin maximalist in 2018, 2019 started looking like the smart thing to do. Whereas now I think people in the, the Pulse chain ecosystem is starting to look like the smart place to kind of be um during this bear market so the one thing i just see happening is the the attention of people is getting divided between all these different altcoins all these games and i fall into it i'm not saying i'm above it like here i am talking about eth w and eth fair like i could just ignore this whole thing but i don't want to because i'm i'm excited that maybe i can get you know five or ten grand out of this whole thing i don't you know that's straight up the truth so it's like we gotta we gotta just be careful that we don't get too fragmented and we just stick together and as long as we wait out it's a game of attrition in cryptocurrency it's just who can survive <laughs> i mean people <laughs> i've seen people sell out or you know die left and right metaphorically of course and uh actually no there 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 have been people that uh uh have sacked for polls that have taken their lives uh because oh. of the delays that's so not good. I don't know necessarily it was delayed, but I know that there are people in the community that ended up getting custody of those coins as a result of losing a friend. So that's some messed Jesus up stuff. Christ, man. Yeah, guys, please uh, have a, try to have an inner sense of purpose and value to your life and don't put all of your, your faith in the work of others, essentially. You know, you are the owner of your own life. You are the master of your, your destiny. Like, you can get on streams, make stuff happen. You could start a business and all this free time you have, you know, you or you might not have any free time. You can keep working, keep dollar cost averaging, you know, work on your relationships with your family, your significant other. There's a lot you could do, you know, work out, get better sleep, eat right, go to the gym. There's a lot you could do to, to keep your mind on right or to keep your head on straight. Hexologist said he misplaced his glass slipper at the cabal. Richard, uh, Prince Richard founded though. Yeah. Did he at put the it on? Cabal. Yeah. <laughs> Did, he, did it fit? I got to know. Did it fit? Because if it didn't fit, you know, you're not the one, Hexo. You're not the, you're not the princess you thought you were, boy. <laughs> Parting isn't a meaningful life. Well, yeah, to a degree. Everything in moderation, including moderation. That's what I say. The, the thing that concerns me most, Coffee, is when I see people jumping into things, thinking they're getting their second chance. And they they go yeah. all into that and they they over leverage and they put more in than they can handle and they're yeah. betting more than they can lose and then they find themselves in a 
place where it doesn't work out and they thought this was their big chance and then yeah. that's the end for them you know exactly right that concerns me most i don't care what people do with your money but do not over leverage do not put any more into this stuff than you can afford to lose and don't let your numbers in your bank account dictate your value okay you can make more money you can't make more time utilize the time that you got now you know that's the inspiration don't over leverage right there don't put a price on your life yeah man <laughs> oh now coffee likes moderation <laughs> i'm learning sir i'm learning can you blame me no i uh yeah i party sometimes it's okay bros it's okay fitted but not where you think Ooh, hexo tell me more sir <laughs> spicy details i'm greatly uh, enjoying hexo's streams here lately in the bear market he is cracking up i don't oh, feel yeah. good because he's cracking up but god yeah. when he's cracking up he's hilarious that's one of the few channels i i, I still watch and uh yeah i i'm always dying laughing at that the shmita his, his little pet shmita Hexo, I hope your Shmita is safe and sound wherever it is. I hope you caught it and uh, I hope you put it away. Because I don't catch a Shmita. <laughs> I'm tired of that, that pesky Shmita. I mean, he keeps dumping the price. Oh, I'm losing it. Yeah, Hexo's losing it. Um, we're all losing it, man. We're all losing it. This this EW thing. Hopefully, this might be like the bottom signal or something. Or am I just foolishly optimistic? Right. I'm always I'm always foolishly optimistic. Hey, ask yourself this, like. Would you rather hold crypto for another five years and bet on that, bet on Hex and Paul Shane going to the moon as your retirement plan? Or would you rather work for 40 more years at a job that you hate for someone that you don't like to maybe one day retire from a 401k and barely have enough money to scrape by to pay your medical bills? And with the promise of what, getting to live on a beach all day, drinking Corona? Like, what what is it really? I mean, use this time now to find your passion because otherwise you'll just end up working for somebody else's else's passion, else's dream. And uh, it's not not too fun. As a person that was in the nine to five rat race for a while, wasn't the best. I tell I tell everybody, look, hex is not a lottery lottery ticket. You should not be looking for an exit point. You should not be looking for a lump sum. You should be looking for a way to buy back your time, to yeah. have the security in your future that you you have something to look forward to. It's it's not a quick cash grab scenario yeah. and i think a lot of people look at it like it's a lottery ticket a lot of we we, we see it in the chat right is pulse going to do a ten thousand x can i hurry up and dump am i going to get that ten thousand x one month after one month after it launches you're not that's not how you win in this game you yeah. don't win in this yeah. game you're jumping from chain to chain you don't win in this game you're chasing the shiny objects me and coffee have both chased plenty of shiny objects we had our ass. I lost a lot of money, guys. I lost an embarrassing amount of money. It's in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. Like in the last bear market, I, I lost a shit ton of money. And I learned a lot, right? But uh, it's funny that you mentioned that Hex and having something to look forward to, like Pulse Chain and Hex in the future, like the future stakes and the future release of Pulse Chain and all these new cool apps coming on. To me, that gives me optimism and hope for the future. And it gives me a sense of purpose and a passion to get behind. And I'm lucky that my passion tends to overlap with a lot of other people's passions. Turns out a lot of people want to get rich, right? It's not too, uh, not too out of the ordinary to want financial freedom. I think financial freedom is a better way to put it, but handling it like something to hope for, something to strive for in the future, I think is a much healthier mindset to look at it as than, oh no, it's not launched yet. Woe is me. I'll never amount to anything and then just hate your life or, or even worse, right? You don't want to end up, uh, you don't want to end up in a, in a dark mental place. So, I mean, the way that I frame this whole thing is we're all on the same team. We're all shooting for something. We're all trying to get somewhere. Like we, we have something to prove, like we have something to build and, and prove to the world. Not like if, if you, you give yourself a less powerful position, if you leave it into the hands of other people and you're the one complaining that, you know, whales are dumping or Richard Hart's not doing enough or the, the influencers aren't doing enough. It's like, that's not a very powerful position to put yourself in. You're not realizing your own self-worth as a person that you literally have control over how you feel and, and how you act in the world. Um, but what is this? A self-help channel? Jesus Christ. Okay. Shrimp eggs for the win. Yeah, that's right. Motley. Shrimp scampi. Shrimp scampi, shrimp gumbo. 
I scam trim. me, scrim, scam, <laughs> scam <laughs> him. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm cooking it. I only lost five bucks in the champy thing, but that was just because we were you throw money in it just to, to play around with it. Yeah. Hey, Kinetics, you're in the chat. I didn't know you were lurking back there. What's up, bro? Gold Key, what's good, homie? Great great partying with you, as always. And congrats on the launch. Gold Key and Dip Catcher, congratulations on the launch. I can't wait till that Diamond Hands Club comes out. I'm trying to stake my uh, perpetuals because I know, my, I know myself. I need to stake that shit. Otherwise, I'm going to dump it early um genetics give me some motivation give me some motivation steak and chill <laughs> steak and shut the hell up observe <laughs> yeah there's your motivation uh yeah you're responsible for everything that happens to you at the end of the day that's uh some of the best words i can give you oh we got some words of wisdom from uh oh, meow mix she ran now out now word from our sponsors <laughs> <laughs> This is all just a cat food commercial. All right. What else? Dog Hands is live. Nice. I did not know that. I guess it just went live today. Everybody, if you're in the perpetuals and you want to stake your perpetual tokens, check out the Diamond Hands Club. Uh, if you have no idea what that means, maybe start with my previous videos. What else? What else? What else? Maybe Richard will pick up lunch next time. <laughs> did you guys hear about oh, when uh, Richard, Richard made Hexo pay for lunch? For I look at it in your thumbnail. I just pulled up on my phone and going, oh my God, I look rough. I got to shave so bad. You don't like that? <laughs> I thought that was a good pick. I picked that one on purpose. <laughs> you look like a serious crypto dude. All right. Grizzly right. Adams. I'm too cheap to buy another blade. I'm just going to grow it out for a bit. <laughs> ah, you look like, uh, you know, the libertarian classic crypto, uh, crypto image. Um, all right. If you don't hold it, you don't own it. Time is no different, and the principles of Hex provides that optimism. It's all speculation, but at least there's some structure of what Richard's built. Yeah, it's all speculation. You mean it was all speculation? Always has been. Uh, the cat in the is in heat, bro. <laughs> well, I'm, what, do you, what do you want me to do about it? I got to get her a, a little partner, I suppose. Anybody got any male cats? <laughs> that's even more loud and obnoxious they got barbs man those cats, yeah. <laughs> those cats lock up together it's not it's not a happy yeah. sound <laughs> yeah yeah Kareem likes hex on all chains hey cool i i hope hex works out on all chains but uh there's existential risk like i said earlier to eth w that i'm not quite sure about yet there's just existential risk with the 51% attacking, you know, the, the miners, I don't know the miners. I don't know the founders. I don't know if anyone on there has good intentions. They could choose to do all kinds of weird stuff if they collude together. Um, it I'm doesn't not matter. To, whether we I'm not like trying it. to flood your bags. Yeah. You can like hex on all chains, but like, do other people respect that opinion? And do other people have motivation to keep, uh, you know, to, to keep building stuff for ETH W and to keep that ecosystem alive? Hey man, I like Hex too. I hope it's expensive on all chains, but it's hope. It's just like, it's hopium and not like certainty. And I'm not going to be the one building stuff on ETHW. I've spent all this time, all this investment, all this social capital and pulse chain. I'm not just, I can't just become an ETHW guy now. Like I can't, I'm not going to commit my time to promoting <laughs> all these different side chains. You know what I mean? Especially ones with worse infrastructure, worse communities, like, there's things about EW that just aren't as good as Ethereum or Pulse Chain. So if that changes, I'd love to change my mind. <laughs> and Kitty agrees, of course. I'd love to change my mind. I'd love to be wrong. Shut up. Stop. Sorry. <laughs> Coffee, Great. what it do? How you doing, Black Label Expat? What's good, man? Uh, don't go forking cats. Just because ETH made it popular. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Get a Q-tip. <laughs> Fuck. Jesus Christ, Huxa. Get out of here with that. You get a Q-tip. You you come here and you you fix my cat for me. <laughs> oh, God damn it. The, the, uh, the, 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 this could go in such a wrong direction. <laughs> yeah, I know. Matty Allen says they had all the same miners that they had two weeks ago. Well, not all the same. They actually have less now because a lot of miners moved on to different stuff. Did I? Know I'll tell that? you what. It doesn't matter whether we like it or not. We've got 15 years worth of hex over there anyway. 
and we're going to have plenty of time to figure out or not it's whether it has diminishing returns or positive returns or not don't have to buy a damn bit of it because it's already there I want to know, I mean, if, if you want to take the counter argument, if someone wants to argue why EW is so good and why they're so confident that it'll be around in a year or two, that's what I'd like to hear. Not just like, like, I mean, we're not going to get anywhere if you're just saying like uh, counter arguments to my stuff, but not arguments for EW. Like, you know, that that's not something that makes me any more confident in EW. It's like, well, let me tell you this. Hex is cheaper over on EW. So if you buy it, you'll you can you can get closer to parity. So you're getting a discount over there right now. So from that standpoint, he you know, we got people basically implying that everybody should sell their liquid hex now and move it over there so that they can push the price up to parity because it's cheaper hex over there because everybody wants a cheap hex just like people right now they think they're going to get cheap hex over on pulse and yeah. to them this proves it because there's cheap hex on uh east w the difference is richard's going to support his own chain that's the difference we don't know what this other stuff is going to be now you can speculate on it you can guess but I sure the hell as an influencer would not be sending people over to a chain that I don't know is going to be around and if it is around, it's very much going to probably end up like any other fork, which it's not going to be the dominant chain. Yeah. So, someone tell me the argument of why EW is a solid network that won't get 51% attacked because it's got less hash rate, that we can guarantee that the people are going to build safe, trustless bridges and safe, trustless lending protocols and infrastructure and all these, you know, all this stuff. I mean, it's, it's only been around for five days. So I just, I literally can't say that after five days that I'm Either. all in EW. I'm not saying Either. I hated EW. Like, that's the thing. People need to understand the nuance. Like I'm not saying EW sucks and it's going to die. I'm saying I think it probably will die in a couple months or years. Not die, but you know, not be that popular anymore because I've seen so many forks before and I've seen the history. That's all I'm saying. And again, if I'd love to be wrong, right? I would love Richard. to be wrong. Richard said, and this is where Maddie was saying, Richard said he doesn't want to see cheap hacks anywhere. Okay. Uh, sometimes, right. okay, okay. Sometimes and if the OA makes a move to stabilize liquidity, then you would have confirmation. Sending people over there, not knowing whether or not the OA is going to make that move to stabilize it, is kind of foolish because you are betting well, on something that is outside of your control. And you are sending other people based on your belief that may or may not be correct. Well, look, it's a gamble of everything else. As long as people are framing this as speculation and a risk and a gamble, that's fine. But uh, to claim to be certain about it doesn't seem responsible. I don't, and I'm not saying anybody's claiming to be certain, but if there are, just be, be wary of that. And uh, yeah, again, if we do see the OA bond liquidity, that would signal to me, that'd be extremely bullish. That'd be awesome. But I don't, I don't think knowing everything that Richard knows about blockchains and how they work, I don't think he'd be that confident either. Um, Manny, promoting a chain that may or may not be around is worse than anything. I, I, I don't get this fudding hex on chains. We're, we're telling people to be cautious and be critical so they don't lose their life sa savings. You, you, as a person that's supposed to be promoting health for people should not be encouraging these FOMOs, these chasing airdrops, these sort of be trading behaviors that Richard doesn't respect. So that's where I stand on that. I don't, I don't think trading behavior is going to be rewarded when the whole concept of hex is supposed to be delayed gratification, which is, uh, I, I don't understand how these two contradicting things. Hold on. Stay. Hold on. I, I think so based on the comments uh, from Maddie, he's, he's saying it's up to us how much it's worth. So basically, yeah, I mean, <laughs> let's try to see the nuance and everything and basically to decide how much it's worth. Hold on. I got to shut this cat up really quick. I'm going to let you finish this up, Coffee because I'm not going to turn this into a, a argument, but you know, I, I, I see some people showing up in everybody else's feed for attention, trying to promote yeah. their personal beliefs 
And I do not recommend that anybody follow one individual and you do take all in, take in all the information and make your own decisions. But I'm going to go, Matt, thank you for having me. And sure. I'll let you finish up on this. Okay. Yeah, take sure. Care. Thanks, Johnny. Uh, Simba says, stop the fudding. I'm going to FUD because I have fear, uncertainty, and doubt. That's literally what FUD stands for, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. So if you don't like that, then don't listen to me. You know, unsubscribe, you know, don't even don't even listen to me if that's not what you want to hear. So if everybody, what, does the same thing of buying Hex W and bonding liquidity over there, then everything would work out correct. But there's also just existential risk to the platform. That's all I'm saying. So just calm down, everyone. See some nuance and everything. And again, I'm not telling anyone to do a certain thing. Just uh, understand the risks associated with your actions, uh, no matter what you do. Pretty simple. <laughs> Old Yeller the cat. Yeah. But Rigsky says, FUD the shit out of it, coffee. Yeah, man. Well, FUD literally stands for fear, uncertainty, and doubt. And I have doubt about ETW. So pretty simple, guys. Pretty simple. People jump to this FUD nonsense when, yeah, see, I think people get emotional and they use the word FUD when someone's talking bad about their, their bags that they want to go up and someone's giving a reason that they might not go up. Um, that's pretty much, I think, and then people just say it as if it's like an evil thing with bad intentions. It's like, no, I mean, it's FUD, but it's based on real reasons. Like I'm giving you my reasons for the FUD. So if you don't, you can counter argue that and, you know, get on your stream and people can watch you and your arguments and decide who they want to <laughs> believe. And more importantly, people should take every everybody's opinion into consideration, including their own opinion, and then make their own decisions. So uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's all I got to say. Thank you for the honest content. Yep, no problem. Uh, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to, I'm not looking at anything else or trading, going to sit on my diamond hands and give myself a very interesting stranger. <laughs> diamond hands are now man's best friend. Oh, that's funny. That's funny. The whole hex game is getting complicated. Yeah, it is getting complicated. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. It's also the bear market. Prices are down. People are restless. Everyone's a little on edge. Coffee. Cry face. No, my bags are in it, so please don't fud it. Please. Yeah, like I'm allowed to say whatever I want, guys. It's a free country. Freedom of speech. I'm on YouTube saying whatever I want to say. If it bothers you that much, you don't have to watch me. You know what I mean? But the answer to free speech or speech that you think is bad speech is uh, is speech that you think is better speech. So if you've got better arguments, then go make them. Go make them, go publicize them. And maybe I can learn a thing or two from, from you because I'm open-minded, right? If you guys can tell me reasons that I should be more confident in EW, I'll try to listen to them. I'll try to understand them. But if they don't make sense to me, I'm not just going to pretend they make sense because we all want the number to go up. Nice one, Coffee. Thanks, man. I see both sides and appreciate what you guys are doing. If it lives, we all win. Exactly. If it, if it lives, we all win. If it dies, you know, I'm happy I'm not putting more money into it right now. But hey, if you want to put money into it now as a gamble, again, it's a gamble. Then if it lives, then you make a lot of money. So that's literally it. That's what it boils down to. You think it's going to be around or you think it's not going to be around? If you think it's going to thrive or not? And if so, do you want to buy more or not? of the hex W right now. Alternatively with the hex you already have, do you want to take profits right now? Do you want to wait and see what happens? Maybe take profits later? Or do you want to, again, buy more of it? It's like pretty finite number of options here. <laughs> buy, sell, do nothing. It's like, uh, just make that decision for yourself, guys. All right, what do we got here? ETH W and ETH F shouldn't exist. That's why we have ETC. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Whatever, man. I'm yeah, there's so many blockchains out there. I got my popcorn, guys. I'm gonna see where the where the dust settles on all this stuff. If Hex is expensive on ETH W one day in a month or two, great. Hell yeah. But I mean, hey, what would that take? It would take pretty much it would take liquidity bonding and uh, a lot of buying. So that's what it would take. Also, you're just on a blockchain that's more prone to um, prone to 51% attacks or other kinds of attacks, you know, minor collusion. Um, I keep repeating this stuff like a broken record. I'm not saying it's going to happen. I'm just saying these are possibilities. 
use the gray matter in between your ears and make your own conclusions and decisions people yeah yeah johnny was getting heated i'm uh, i'm going full zen mode people don't need to put money in it they just need to stop saying things that are false about it sure people do need to stop saying things that are false about it i uh i don't think uh i've said anything false about it right i'm just saying what i think Nothing wrong with gambling. If we're going to gamble, why not be it be on a hex and a dummy wallet? Sure. Sure, guys. Why not? Go have fun. But also really be careful, right? Like I said earlier, if you're connected to the wrong network and you do an, an unstake on the wrong network, you could lose a lot of money. Or if you're uh, making a big sell or a big buy on the wrong network, you could be doing the thing that you don't want to be doing. So really just triple check you're on the right network. Make sure you're just following security practices and all that stuff and uh, have fun with your shenanigans. I don't think Coffee or Johnny said anything that was incorrect. Yeah, I don't know if he was implying that we said anything incorrect. I think uh, maybe he was referring to people in general saying incorrect things. Yeah, you do need to, to think and be careful when, when you talk and use language because words are important. You know what I mean? I, I do think the language is very important. You know, when we talk about stuff, we need to be careful with what we say because the world is full of just people, Twitter especially, you know, people will just make up facts left and right, fake news, all this stuff. With great power comes great responsibility, right? So with the freedom of language, the freedom of information, you have to be responsible with that information. This is better than a Telegram chat. <laughs> yeah, maybe it's kind of like a Telegram chat live, right? People who don't believe what I believe are wrong. <laughs> yeah, get them fast, Abdul. System state. Copy this chat on a TG, lol. Okay. Replay attacks are not an issue and never were. Um, a bridge just got replay attacked, bro. Um, replay attacks are an issue. <laughs> they're, they're always a, like a possibility, right? You can't say, be careful with using absolute terms like never, right? Like never, not an issue and never were. Sounds like an absolute statement there. Hexagon should not FUD because liquidity is so low it causes crashes. Well, dude, <laughs> people are going to do whatever they're going to do. You can try to affect them one way or another, but people are going to make their own decisions at the end of the day. So, hmm. Richard S. says, no, you sold all your ETW copies already, right? No, never said I did. And that's not true. I did not. Never were on ETHW. Well, let's see. Replay attack on ETHW. ETHW confirms contract vulnerability exploit dismisses replay attack claims. Hmm. The proof of work fork of Ethereum was targeted by a cross chain contract exploit. Oh, yeah, okay. So the exploit was a cross chain bridge, it looks like. So there hasn't been a replay attack yet. Just because there hasn't been one yet doesn't mean there never will be. We are in the matrix. ETHW is a glitch in the matrix. Yeah. I see people sell because of FUD. It's their loss or their gain, whatever, man. People want to sell. They, they made a gain so they can take that gain and they're entitled to their opinion. We have a track record to show that the proof of work, that proof of work can have value long term. It should not be up to the ETH Foundation to make everyone go to proof of stake and not have a choice. This proof of work chain gives people a choice. Yes, it does. And uh, I, I do agree the market will decide. Like, very simple. You guys are the market. We're all the market. It's kind of exciting. Happy I sold all my LUNC. Oh, geez. You were playing with LUNC? Damn. That's, uh, that was risky business. Imagine RH fudding EW, he will destroy Hex in one hour, so don't FUD. <laughs> Simba, you need to see nuance, bro. You can't just tell people what to do. Like, I'm going to do whatever I want. And uh, if I see another thing like that from you, I will continue to do whatever I want, and I will hide you from the channel. Did we slip into a parallel universe when the stream glitched? Yeah, maybe. Maybe this was all, uh, let's see. Maybe this was all like of that quantum computer. What's that conspiracy theory about how quantum computers are causing, uh, oh, the Mandela effect? Yeah, this is like the Mandela effect. There's definitely a universe where there is no ETHW. There's a universe where Ethereum Fair is the dominant chain, lol. 
LOL, the broad categorization of hex OGs and fudding. Yeah, that's the thing. Hex OGs is like, uh, it's became, become like this blanket term to just have a boogeyman because everybody likes to point their finger and say, it's the hex OGs. Do you mind, know how many hex OGs there are? There's like probably a thousand or more of people that I would consider people that bought really low in hex. There's thousands probably. So they're all doing different stuff. They're not colluding together. They're not, I don't talk to almost anybody uh, in the hex community every day. And, you know, <laughs> maybe once a week, I talk to like a handful of people once a week, if that. Uh, and fudding, yeah, fudding is just boiled down to a term to be like something that you don't like to hear. You're not pumping my bag, so you're fudding. It's like, all right, man. Spreading false risks is really frustrating. Maddie, is a 51% attack a risk on a, a proof of work chain? Yes, it is. It always is. So <laughs> try to relax, buddy. Try to relax. Proof of work versus proof of stake equals proof of shit. Ooh, harsh words. All right, guys. OGs fudding. Yeah, if I hear like OGs fudding one more time, I'm just going to ban, ban that. Maddie. <laughs> All right, guys. Try to uh, try to find some inner peace, everybody. I hope the words that I've spoken have not upset you so much. Hope you're not all super triggered. I know a couple of you probably are. Anyway, guys, make sure you like and subscribe. I've been talking for an hour and a half. Go go back and watch the replay uh, of this because the first half an hour got cut off by YouTube. There was a global there's a global ban of or not ban like there's a global uh, issue with live streams. So the first half hour is something you guys have to go back and watch when we didn't have such a fun chat right here. <laughs> Optimal timeline. I can't believe you've done this. Cheers, coffee. Have a good one, bro. Have a good one, Will. And uh, cool, man. Thanks for, thanks for coming, everybody. Really appreciate all of you. See you later.